Redfin, one of the most powerful players in the residential real estate market in the United States, closes its eye buying or home flipping business. Is this a sign of an upcoming home, home market crash? No. The data does not say that. In fact, even their own letter doesn't support that. I'm Bill Gross. This is my weekly real estate update where I go through the data below the headlines to help you understand what's really happening in the real, in the real estate market to make the best decisions for you. So let's talk about uh, what Redfin did. Redfin laid off this week, like a lot of tech companies, 13% of their staff. And it was all primarily related to the home flipping business. Now, a lot of tech companies have been laying people off because the idea of technology companies was always based on they could build market share, build, 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 put other businesses out of business without actually making a profit. And then when the market got slow, they'd have to turn off those machines and actually make a profit like everybody else. Redfin is one of those companies that never made a profit actually flipping houses. They started this division. The idea was to take over the real estate industry and they had investors who gave them money to do that. Now, who are those investors and why is that fair or not fair is a whole discussion. But the reality is there's no sane money behind that. They're using other people's money, gambling. If they win, they don't the market. And if they lose, of course, they say, sorry, try again next week. As a result, they're going to lay off thousands of people, as are many other tech companies throughout the, the real estate market. Now, why are they doing that? When you look at the market, is the market crashing? Is that what Redfin is predicting? And I would say absolutely not. In fact, Redfin themselves predicts the housing prices to go up three to slow to 3% or down from 50% to 3%. So if you're predicting a housing crash, they're projecting a more normal housing market. Business did great in an abnormal market or great when nobody's paying attention to money, but when it comes to just making a profit in a normal market, they absolutely cannot compete. And if you look at the letter that the founder sent, the all hands email that he sent to all the employees describing it, basically they talk about this 13% layoff and they say that the housing market's going to 2023, there'll be 30% less sales than there were in 2021. Now think about that. Housing prices went up 50% year over year, or about 30% higher than two years ago. Now the sales go down 30%, but the overall market's about where it was two years ago. And, and it's projected to increase about 3%. So all Redfin is saying is that their model for all the technology and all the hype and all the excitement really can't compete with the real estate market that was there before them will live long after them. Now, <clears throat> absolutely, though, you've, you're going to hear more information about uh, the housing market being more volatile, and it is more volatile. Last week, for example, we had the largest one-day drop in the history of the real, of mortgage rates. We went from about 7.3%, 7.4%, down to 6.6%. Fantastic drop in rate, change the whole market. Now, this is related to the inflation numbers. It's related to the cryptocurrency. It's all kind of interrelated. And I think the thing that's important here is that the housing market isn't leading the market. The housing market is following the rest of the economy. And as there's a projection for recession, investors are pulling money back from the housing market. Investors are. But people still want a place to live. And people still own their homes and aren't giving them away at, 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 at uh, uh, you know, record low prices or foreclosure prices. I've seen numerous people say to me, but Bill... Case Schiller says housing prices are going down. And you've seen these different articles with this really scary graph, and this one's in red to really make it scary, where it looks as though prices are going down. But when you really look at the graph, what it's reporting, it's not saying prices are going down. It's month-to-month -month price change. It means that the month of, in this case, um, uh, the actual numbers were uh, October, September to October. From October... Prices went down on, on an overall basis by less than 1% month to month. And if you analyze that, that's the difference. That means that instead of projecting a 15% annual increase, they're projecting a 10% annual increase or a 3% annual increase. And that's causing the reduction in the increase, not an actual reduction in the prices. And we look at the actual projection of prices, they're still projecting an increase of you know, they, I'm sorry, experienced, in this case, it's a lag indicator, experienced an increase in prices annualized of about 10%. So while the scary chart shows it went down, 
it, it's really the rate of increase that went down, not the actual prices. Wow. And there's a, there's a phone, of course, in the middle. When I forgot to put on, do not disturb. Sorry for those listening live. But we're not gonna we're not gonna edit it out because you know we're just gonna go with the flow here. So my point is that prices are not going down. They're projected to go up more slowly, but they are definitely still projected to go up. Okay. So what does all this mean to you as a investor? Are housing prices crashing? In order for housing prices to crash, there had to be two other things happening at the same time. One, more people falling behind in the mortgage or delinquencies. Number two, people losing equity to where it's no longer worth keeping the house and they'll give it back to the bank. Are those happening? No, absolutely not. Take a look at delinquencies. It's so low, you can barely even see the numbers. This is a historic low still. Still historic lows of delinquencies overall in the market. Now, I think a part of that's because of politics, part of that's because of the economy, there's a lot of factors into it. But as long as people can afford the mortgage and are making the mortgage payments, they're not going to walk away from the house and give it back to the bank at a discounted rate that's going to cause foreclosures. So absolutely not. This, uh, delinquencies, while they bumped up a little bit, and you'll see when that little bump went up, all kinds of reporting of the delinquency <laughs> records going up again from this low level. But again, it's gone back down again. So absolutely not are delinquencies going up. The other factor is home equity. Take a look at the negative equity rates and volumes. Back in 2008 and 9, look at all the uh, number of homes that had negative equity. And what happens is they have to foreclose on them. The bank puts them back and the resells the property. Look how low they are. They've stayed low since 2000, uh, really uh, 18, 19, 20, and continue to go down because housing prices went up so much and people couldn't get the crazy loans they got in 2008, 2009. As a result, there's still equity in homes. So if a seller could not afford a house, they can sell it and cash out rather than just give the keys back to the bank. So what's all this mean? The, the real estate market is going from its record pace over the COVID period to a more normalized pace. And I think that's most everything. I think overall the economy had all these inefficiencies and changes during a COVID period. Technology stocks, streaming TV did really well. And now people are going back to movies, going back to ball games, going back to parks. There's a lot of changes going back to normal in the market. And the real estate market is following along that trend, not leading it into housing crisis. And maybe crypto markets crashing. In fact, looks like FTX has crashed and others may. And there'll be continued disruptions throughout the financial market. But as of right now, as of today, as we sit here, the real estate market seems to be healthy, uh, poised for reasonable growth next year, 3%. And if the economy improves in the next year or two, we'll see better returns. And what does that mean for you? If it's a good time to buy a house, buy a house if you can afford it. Now, don't bankrupt yourself, but if you can house, the house you're buying is probably going to go up 3% next year on average. And if you're only putting 20% of your own money into the deal, that means the whole five times your investment is going to get five times 3% return on that investment. And on an investment deal, if it cash flows and you can make a reasonable return for your money, over time that appreciation will be one of the other benefits of owning real estate. And if it doesn't make sense for you to buy a house, don't buy a house. If you can't afford to live there and an the investment's no good, don't do that. So Elm Bill Gross, as always, I'm here Call, text, email if I can help you. And as always, make today your best day ever. Thanks so much.